Poor man's ER span. I have run into situations where I'm trying to get a PCAP from a remote location and good old Cisco has failed to give that device that I'm trying to capture from an ER span feature. So recently I came up with a way to create your own ER span using GRE encapsulation and get the packets to you so you can observe them. So let's check this out. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how you can do this. Okay, so to begin looking at the diagram, I want to capture traffic between this client and this gateway. So I have the client is 192.168.2.198 and the MAC address below. I don't want to read that, sorry. Then the gateway, which is 192.168.2.1 and there's the MAC address for it as well. So what I want to do is I want to capture traffic between these two endpoints and ultimately I want to send it to the Wireshark machine so I can analyze the traffic. The Wireshark machine is sitting somewhere else on the network, far away. How am I going to do that? Well, here's your answer. Take it all in. All right, so I'll explain this a little more. I want to capture traffic between the client and the gateway. I'm going to take that traffic and I'm going to set up a span port to a remote span VLAN, 333. Now I'm going to send that over to a router, a separate router, and I'm going to have two interfaces set up, and both of those are going to be fed that VLAN. G2 and G3. G2, I'm going to set the IP address to 1111 slash 30. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Really, at this point, we're dealing with layer 2. We're not dealing with layer 3, so it's not a big deal. And I'm going to set the MAC address of that interface to the same MAC address as the gateway. Then I'm also going to set up another interface, G3, and I'm going to add the MAC address of the client. And so essentially what's going to happen is as I span this traffic and send it over to this router, these interfaces are going to receive that traffic and they're going to think that they are these two endpoints. And so they're going to accept that traffic in just like any intermediate router that's doing routing in between. All right, so once I have that, I'm going to set up a tunnel interface as well. This is all going to be within the global routing table. And I'm going to set up an IP route to send all traffic, don't care, to tunnel 333 and destination address 3332, which if you look at the IP address of the tunnel interface, 3331, 3332 is the only other host IP address within that subnet, that slash 30. And it doesn't matter that that IP address doesn't exist anywhere because the tunnel is still going to send based on tunnel destination, 192.168.3.2. Okay, so once the traffic comes in, to either G2 or G3, and it sees that the destination IP address as something other than 11102220 or 3330, it's going to send it using the default route, which means it's always going to take the traffic that's coming in from the span VLAN and send it over this tunnel interface regardless, it doesn't matter. So I have an interface set up on this router within a VRF name management. And if you look at the IP address 192.168.2.130, you can see that it's within the same VLAN as the original traffic that I'm capturing. So that GRE encapsulated traffic is going to be sent back into VLAN 200 and at that point it's going to take my regular enterprise routing information and send that traffic on to the destination. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's pretty neat. Anyway, let's get to the configuration. Okay, so to begin I'm gonna jump on the switch that has my gateway. Alright, so first on the switch I'm going to take a look at my ARP cache for VLAN 200. See what I got in there. And as you can see, I have my gateway, dot one. I have the client, dot 198. And then I also have that interface on my router that's in that VRF MGMT, dot 130. Perfect. It's exactly what I want. Now I need to take a look and make sure I have a remote span VLAN configured. I'll do a show run pipe section. Let's see, I'll start beginning stream VLAN 333 close out that that uh, stream and there it is VLAN 333 and it is configured for remote span so I'm good to go so I can go ahead and configure my monitor session now that's awesome monitor session 1 source interface uh, and this is going to be oh you know what let's take a look at that I'm not really sure I want to make sure I got the right interface right so let me get out of there let me do a show Mac address table address and then I'm going to look up this MAC address and see what port it's on. It's on F03. Alright, we're we're good to go now. Let's go ahead and move on with this. Monitor session one source interface F03. 
and then we're going to send it to that VLAN monitor session one destination mm. remote VLAN and I put it in <laughs> remove remote VLAN three three three. All right, cool. So in that show monitor session all and we can see we have it we are capturing in both directions for FA03 and our destination is remote span VLAN 333 looks like we're on point here so let's do a show IPR VLAN 200 again because I'm going to need some MAC addresses here so now I'm going to jump on my router take a look here show IP brief you can see I've got G1 that has that 192.168.2.130, so it's within that VLAN 200. It's within that VLAN. Show run IMT G1. You can see I have VRF forwarding MGMT, so it's in that VRF. Now I have G2 and G3 are going to be the interfaces that I'm going to configure to receive this span traffic. And so VLAN 333 is being propagated to these interfaces. Uh, they're basically configured as, as switch ports, so everything's coming through raw, there's nothing being tagged, it's just going straight to it. Alright, so, we get in here, I'll go to G2, I'm going to change the MAC address. G2 is going to be the gateway, right, so dot one, so I need to copy that MAC address over, control C, dump that in here, done, and I'm going to make this IP address 1111, 255.255.255.252. I'm going to no-shut it. ITG3, MAC address, back to the switch, and grab the client MAC address, and paste it in here, good to go, IP address 2221-255-255-255-252, no-shut, in, show IP route. These interfaces are in the global routing table, right, so anything I do here is not going to have any impact over VRF and GMT whatsoever. Awesome, so you can see I have the interfaces here. I have the directly connected slash 30s, and then I have local routes for the individual IP addresses that are configured on the interfaces as well. So what I would expect to see. All right, so I go into config T. I'm going to configure this tunnel interface next. INTT333. I'm going to set the IP address to 3331 I'll make the tunnel VRF. Remember. This is going to write over VRF MGMT, so I need to identify that as far as the tunnel is concerned. So MGMT. I'm going to make my tunnel source G1, that interface that's already in VRF MGMT. And my tunnel destination is going to be 192.168.3.2. All right. And then also, to wrap this up, if I do a show IP route again for the global routing table, you can see I've got these all these interfaces in here, but I don't have anything else. I need a default. So I'm going to configure an IP route VRF. Actually, I don't need a VRF. I'm in the global routing table. Quad zero. I'm going to send it to the tunnel 333, and the destination IP is going to be 3.3.3.2. All right, no problem there. That's all done. So if I do a show IP route again, you can see I have my static route in there. Uh, for the quad zero. So that looks good. Now if I do a show IP INT brief, you can see all my interfaces are up, the tunnel interface is even up. All right, perfect. So everything's there. Everything should be working. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring up the machine that's actually running or that's receiving this traffic, the 192.168.3.2. I'm going to start this PCAP and I am selecting on GRE and no ICMP and no TCP port 3389, right? I only want to see stuff that's coming through that spam port. I don't want to see traffic that's being generated as a result of receiving this traffic. And I don't want to see remote desktop connection stuff. I don't care about that, you know? So anyway, you can already see here, dot .198 is reaching out to 8844. If you look down here in the uh, details, you can see GRE encapsulation you can see the original IP header, 192.168.2.130, going to 3.2. So that's that tunnel source and destination. Sourcing from that router interface G1 and going to the tunnel destination 3.2. And then you get the actual packets that you're interested in seeing after the GRE header.
So you get your IPv4 uh, header, and you also get TCP down here, and anything else that would come after that. If it's TLS, you know, then you'll see your, your TLS header as well. So as I bring things back up here so you can actually get to it. So as you can see, this is an excellent way to get packets from remote locations to other locations, remote locations. So as you can see, this is a great way to enable you to get packets from a remote location when Cisco fails to provide ER span on certain platforms. I would love to test this out uh, using one piece of equipment with multiple router interfaces and using VRFs to chop everything up. That way you just basically send everything back into itself within the same device and you manage to pull out a PCAP and send it somewhere. Uh, the only caveat to that is that whatever you use, whatever device you use, the interfaces need to be router capable. You need to be able to set the MAC address on them. Also, um, if you're setting this up and you're using sub-interfaces, bear in mind that when you change the MAC address on an interface, you can only change it on the primary interface, and it applies for all sub-interfaces that are associated. So, in order to capture bidirectional traffic, you need two router interfaces, each with the specific MAC address for each side so that it will pick up uh, on that traffic and send it. That's it. Thank you for watching.